So don't think too much about what other people would think. Don't think too much about what other people would say or whether they like your videos or not. Just fall in love with making videos. Like, that's the, I think that's the one of the most, if I say anything, if you take anything from this whole video as a creator, just take that, fall in love with making content. When you fall in love with making content, every other thing becomes easy. Are you going to share with us today how much you earn in a month? How much I earn in a month? Yes, from so everything what, that you do. So what I earn in a month, What's up guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Priscilla, I'm an Indian women's wear designer. And in today's video, we have one of Africa's biggest YouTubers. I mean, he makes amazing content telling stories about people and places. I'm talking about the one, the only, Mr. Tayo Aino. What's up? See, he flew all the way from Nigeria to be on this channel. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, not just, not I'm, I'm not making this up. Not He's easy. in my space, live yeah. and direct. Live and Ca direct. Can you tell? I am yeah. so excited. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's get started. All right, cool. Would you like to introduce yourself to us today, Ty? Yeah, what's up, guys? I'm um, Ty, I know. I make videos and I travel the world and yeah. It's the way he's so chill about it. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. But it's all good. It's all good. Thank you for being here today. Hopefully you guys would enjoy this video. With that being said, let's get into this. Welcome back to the channel. I have an amazing guest with me today. You have no idea how excited I am to have this brilliant mind in my studio. I have some burning questions I'm going to be asking you. We're going to make it more conversation. And if you have any more questions for Tayo, leave them in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and let's get into this. Okay? We know you from YouTube. That's where at least I know you from. But aside, you know, traveling to different places, interviewing people and sharing like inspiring stories, like who is Tayo? Who is Tayo I know. I'm honestly very curious because all I just see is the high res videos, cinematography, the drone shots. But behind all of that, who is Tayo? Um, Tayo is somebody who just wants to make the world a better place through his work. Really? Mm -hmm. Ah, it's giving Michael Jackson, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with that. We'll go with that. Um, what was like your upbringing like? My upbringing, I went to this normal, average family. My mom was uh, was a soldier. Uh, she was in the military. She was a dentist in the military. Oh, okay. In the Nigerian army, mm. and my dad was an immigration officer. So they're both civil serv civil service people. Mm. And yeah, I went to school. It's like every other kid. I don't like school. Uh, I still don't like school. <laughs> And yeah, it was it was just like just uh, going to school, you know, coming back home, just basic uh, normal um, middle income family, mm. like average family. Mm. And we, we the periods where it was difficult to pay like the school fees. Mm. Um, so just imagine a family like that. It's not like we're not struggling to eat, but there were periods where my pops would have to borrow money to pay our school fees or mm. send us home from school. Mm. And yeah, we lived in Nigeria or like all our lives till mm. I started to travel. Mm. So yeah, that's kind of like my background. I have an elder brother and a younger sister. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and I lived in Lagos mostly. I was born in Lagos, lived in Lagos like all my life. Mm. I still live in Lagos up to now. Mm. And yeah, that's it basically. I'm actually, this one just popped in my head. Do you yeah. have an English name? No, I don't have an English name. See, so your name from, just... I'm from a kid's state. Ah! Everything is fully Yoruba. Fully Yoruba. Yes. Do you have another Yoruba name? Timmy Tire, you know, that's my name. Interesting. Yeah. So I can call you Timmy if I want to. No, don't call me Timmy. <laughs> call me Tire. <laughs> <laughs> Did you always have this kind of like clear vision from the beginning? No. I know what I wanted to do. You seem so like tunnel vision though. Mm, uh, um, I don't want to suffer. <laughs> I don't want to be hungry. <laughs> So I, I didn't have a clear vision. Mm. I just, you know, I, I wanted to be many things when I was young. But one thing I was sure of, even for when I was very young, when I was in like primary two, was I knew I wasn't going to work for anybody. Mm. I, always knew, I, I always knew that whatever I wanted to do in life, it had to be like based on my effort. Mm. Like it, it couldn't be based on somebody else or 
working with somebody else mm. or working under somebody else. Because mm. I always, I always kind of like knew. So I, how I even knew this was the first time I had the experience of basically making money was when I was in primary two. And I used to collect 200 bucks from my parents for a week. 200 bucks is like, it's like two, two, no, that's not even, that's like two, two pence. It's less than, I thought, because I, I, you were going to tell us like, guys, less than a pound. Yeah, yeah that's less than a pound. That's yeah, like yeah. 0.2 of a pound. Yeah. They call it penny? Uh, yeah, we call it penny. Penny, so that's mm. like 20, pence, 20, yeah. 20 pence mm, or something. Mm. And I used to use it to buy like a packet of sweets and sell it to my classmates. <laughs> And that was the first time I experienced like business. I was like, oh, so I can actually use money to make more money. I can use mm. money to buy something and sell it for a profit and make money. Mm. And I was like, hmm, okay, so if I can do this now, I can imagine what I could do if I had more money. Mm. So from there, I was always like interested in business. I used to sell like game games to my mates when I was in like primary four, primary five, like Game Boy. I used to go and look for like Game Boy cartridges, sell to them, Game Boy, um, Xbox, mm, PS1, mm, all of that. Mm. When I was in secondary school, I used to do that too. Then I moved on to phones. I used to sell phones. So if somebody, if somebody, and I didn't even have the phone. So if somebody wants to sell their phone, I would just look for somebody who wants to sell the phone and look for somebody who wants to buy the phone and I would join them together and I would take my money off the top. So I had a lot of like different side gigs I was doing primary, secondary school. And then when I got into university, I still kept on doing that. So I always knew that, okay, there's always a way to make money. Like you can make money. I used to read a lot of all these business books and you know, like read a lot of like uh, biographies on, is it biographies? Yeah, biographies mm-hmm. on like all these people who have, who have been able to build big companies. And I was like, okay, one day I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be like these people. I want to create something of value that people can find useful. Mm-hmm. And I know once I can do that, I'll make money. True. So I always had that at the back of my mind, but I, didn't, I never knew I wanted to do videos. I was I was never into photography or videography till I started YouTube. So I never knew anything about like how to film, how to, t- to take pictures, how to do whatever. It was YouTube that made me know that. You learned everything on YouTube. Everything on YouTube. Nobody like. Nobody. They can't teach me. Who would teach me? There's nobody doing what I'm doing. Because I know that Africa. people who do like courses and workshops and mm-hmm. things like that that you can take if you want to learn how to maybe shoot pictures you or know, make videos. The best way to know that if anybody, like to even confirm if anybody taught me is like, I'm the first person doing what I'm doing in Nigeria. This is true. So who do I learn from? This is true. <laughs> so the only people I could learn from were people in the US, mm. UK, mostly US actually, then Peter McKinnon, Casey Neistat, who were filming. Um, who were making videos in US, in New York, and I was like, oh, these people are making these cool videos. Oh, I can make my own version in Nigeria, in Lagos. And that's how I started on learning how to make videos. You know, I used to watch a lot of tutorials online. I used to watch like 20, 25 videos every day on YouTube to learn how to make videos. So I learned on YouTube and then I decided that, okay, I need to, you know, you know, kind of like make my own videos for the platform. Since I already watched this guy's video, I wanted to make my own and put it on the platform. And that's how I started documenting Lagos and Nigeria. That's incredible though. I'm just curious to know if your family, if they were supportive of your journey into, you know, creating content, putting your work online, putting yourself online, or were they just like, eh, let's just see what this thing that uh, you They were just like, let's just see, because but the thing is that they couldn't have not been supportive if they wanted to, because. Mm. I was, I think they already knew that this guy would do whatever I wanted. <laughs> I was stubborn. I was very stubborn right when I was young. So I was a very stubborn child. So it's like, ah, let's just leave. Let's just see what it's going to do. Because when I was in university, I had a restaurant. And I opened a restaurant. It was what? called, yeah, it was called Mr. Macaroni, 400 level. It's like, yeah, it was called Mr. Macaroni. I used to sell pasta and spaghetti. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that was, I didn't know you were texting. I was going to say, oh, maybe it's okay. You're a man here. My name is yeah. Macaroni. It's like, why? So I, I got it for that, Mr. Macaroni. Oh, I, I didn't know that. So okay. I was like, and I was like, oh, I'm selling pasta. So what's the, what's the cool name to use? I was like, mm. Mr. Macaroni, everybody knows. And I, and they used to call me Mr. Macaroni in school then. But the restaurant shut down in like seven months because I didn't know anything about cooking. Mm. Um, that was actually one of my biggest, um, first biggest failures or like the second biggest failures because when i was in 200 level i had a company it was an event company i i wanted to create a company that would organize parties so i did like i spent so much money did like this first party and i wasn't even a party person i'm an introvert i don't i don't go to parties like if you call me uh, you say i should come to the club i won't i won't, I won't answer you i like to be in my house i like to read books i like to read blogs i like to watch youtube videos mm. i was like just be chilled i don't like stress 
So the, the company failed, so that one's also failed. Then my macaroni company also failed too, because I feel like I wasn't selling the right product in the, the, the product wasn't for that market. Because most people wanted to eat Eba, Amala, all those things. I mean, I was bringing macaroni to them. We were like, what is like, this? What is this? Like, like, mm. So that failed too. But why I brought that up was because when my dad came to school, then he didn't, he was upset. He was like, this is not what I sent him to school to do. When he heard that, oh, I was in macaroni. My mom was like, oh, cool. But my dad was like, ah, this is not what I sent. And then in hindsight, I understand. It's like, you know, he doesn't want me to like fail in school and all of that. Because it was having a restaurant even now. It's, be, tough. it's a lot of work. Yeah. I had my restaurants when I was in school. And that was also one of the hardest things I've ever had to do, having that business when I when I created it. But it also taught me so much. Mm. I learned so much about business. I also experienced failure. So I'm not afraid of failure anymore. Because also, like, experiencing failure at that time, I feel like experiencing failure at that time is even much deeper than now. Because then you are younger. So you feel like, how will I even explain it? You know, I'm meant to be in school. Like everybody in school knew that the business stopped working. So, mm. and then, you know, it's, it's uni. So it's like, and you are more conscious about what people think about you. If sure. I fail today, I don't... Okay, maybe you bleep that out. <laughs> I don't care. I won't care that, oh, like, oh, like, I won't care because I'm older now and I know that everybody has one life to live. You just need to do what you need to do. But then I was younger, so that could have, like, you know, pushed me into like a, 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 a dark place or whatever. But I just kind of like took what I learned from it and just pushed yeah, ahead. So, but my parents, so back to what you were saying to answer your question, Claire, and I went, I went like all the way around. I think uh, my parents, they just had to accept. And I think eventually when they really accepted what I was doing was when their friends, my mom actually was cool with it right from time. My dad was like, okay, well, like, oh, let's just, it wasn't like opposing. Or it wasn't anything because also another thing too is also after I finished um, uni, Uber came to Nigeria and I started driving for Uber. And I drove for Uber, so that was from where from there I, I decided learning how to make videos, learning how to make videos. I was able to eventually start making videos for people. Made some money. I left the house, got my apartment. And my parents lived in Lagos, but I left the house because I wanted to be like alone. I wanted to just be free to be able to explore and do whatever I wanted to do. So once I left the house, you, know, you can't tell me anything. I make my own money. I'm just. At what age did you leave home? Um, I was. I wasn't so young like that. I guess I was like 2015, I think. Are we going to find 2016. out? 2016. I'm 30. I'm 30. I'm 30 years old. Yeah. You're, you're younger than me. Uh, older. <laughs> <laughs> 33. Okay, it's cool. Yeah, in UK, I'm in Lagos. What does that mean? <laughs> Lagos life injures you quicker. Uh, Lagos. <laughs> wow, okay. Yeah. I'm learning plenty new things today. Yeah, yeah, so I left. I think probably I left when I was 20, 20. How many years ago is that? 2016, 2015, 2016. That's so like eight, eight years ago? Yeah, yeah about eight, eight years, years ago. ago. Yeah. So I left when I was like 22, 22 years. That's young. Maybe for a guy, it's okay. Uh, but as a girl, uh, you're yeah, living your. Father's house at 22 uh, in Nigeria. You have to also in the streets. Wow. You have to also. <laughs> <laughs> if you weren't making videos or pictures, what else would you be doing? I, I'll be doing something creative. Mm. I always knew right from time, I always wanted to. I had this vision in terms of like, I always knew, I didn't know what it was, but I always knew that whatever I would do had to be something creative. Like I would think about something and do it. And it had to be something I would do with my hands. Mm in some way, in some form or the other. It had to be something of me thinking about an idea. and Because even all the ideas I've done so far, all the businesses, it was just like, something else had an idea. And I'm like, okay, the, the Mr. Macaroni, I had an idea. I said, let me execute on it. I executed, I ran the restaurant for seven months. The party thing, I executed on it. So every time I have an idea, once I, my brain, my body and my soul and everything just aligns with it, I just move forward. So also the, the idea of like, oh, let me make, because I was taking pictures around Lagos and I was like, let me make a video. And my body aligned with it and I said, okay. And I made the first video, posted it on Instagram. It wasn't really, it was like a 30 second video. And I saw like one or two comments, people liked it. I'm like, okay, cool. And then from there, I started falling in love with making videos. So once I align with something, I just, just push go ahead it, with I just go ahead with it. You, uh, you, do you not dwell on the, oh, what if this doesn't work? What if the, it doesn't work, I'll do it just like... I always just, if, if I, and that's why I said, it's more of me just aligning myself with it first. Once my mind, and I'm, I've thought about it, and I'm like, okay, let me try this thing. Once I'm I'm ready to try it, I might try it too. 
me coming to London was, oh, let me go to London. And you try just it. woke up. As in, I, I still honestly cannot understand that. You just woke up one day, mm, I'm coming to London today. Yeah, I was like, and I'm going to just, what? Like, I was like, let me just come to London. Like, okay, I've done Africa. I've done a lot of Africa. You know, I've done most of the countries in Africa. Most mm. of like the popular countries. Like, okay, let me go somewhere else and see what's happening. I was like, oh, you okay, okay. Let me see what's there. And I came. You travel often though. Yeah, yeah, like lot. you travel a lot. How do you fund your trips? Um, from YouTube, um, now it's easy because like I make money on YouTube. I make money in sponsorships. I make money from brands, like brand sponsorships. I make money from YouTube AdSense to mostly. So those are like my two major um, forms of making money. Mm. So that funds my trips mostly. And then I also, um, what else? Oh yeah, those are like the two main ones actually. Uh, I have a course too that I do, that I have. Um, it's called, it's like a YouTube course. Yeah. You, you can learn how to go on YouTube um, with the course. And But that one, once in a while, you know, somebody buys a course. So like digital products, I also make money from that too. Um, but that's the major, those are the major ways. But when I started, it wasn't like that. You know, it took me, I made my first money from YouTube. I actually collected my first money in 2020, after the pandemic. It's a lie. It's a true. Wait. <laughs> How? Yeah, because oh cause, my gosh, because I started making money, like actual money, in 2020, early 2020. That's when I started. Because before it was like one dollar, two dollar, one dollar. Mm. That was in 2019. That was when my account was like kind of like monetized properly, one dollar, two dollar. But in 2020, that was when I, I was making a lot more videos and I started making money. 2020 was when I end of 2020 was when I hit like. Almost ending chart was when I hit like 100,000 subscribers. So that was when I was making more money. But the problem was I couldn't withdraw it because the AdSense pin in Nigeria. Oh, they have to send it to you. Yeah, right? and then that's our postal true, service is like crappy. Mm. So I couldn't touch any of the money till end of 2020. So everything I've done, I did so far from 2017 ish when I started posting videos. I couldn't even take any money out of it. So I was just spending money, spending money, spending money. So it was the 2020 ending. That I could do. That I received my first check from YouTube. But you've really grown in such a way that you inspire a lot of creators, myself included. Like mm -hmm. the quality of your work. I'm serious. The quality of your work, Thank the you stories so you share, and now you're almost at 700k. Because yeah. I checked this morning. That is amazing. I'm sure mm -hmm. you hit one million very soon. Yeah, that's the, that's very the goal. Soon, Our goal this year soon. is to hit one million. Hey. That's why. I, that's why you see. That's why I'm in London. From here, I'm going to New York. I want to go and find my. As a, what are we doing at one million? Uh, we work on the next video to get to 1.1 Wait, no, you would, Will you not take a moment to actually celebrate how far you've come? Because that's something I've noticed with a lot of creators is that we're just like, go, 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 go. Yeah, I think I think for me, like, I imagined 1 million, like, I looked at 1 million two years ago. It's different from how I look at 1 million now. Because then I used to look at 1 million and I'm like, oh, 1 million, but I just get to 1 million, like, oh, everything is just like so beautiful. But then I realized that, you know, it's, it's good to celebrate. If I get to one million, obviously, I'll, I'll, Do I'll, something. I'll chill. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, ah, it's one million. <laughs> Not everybody gets to one million. <laughs> but I also feel like I don't, the, the, the amount of importance I used to put on the actual one million is lesser now. Why? Be because I feel like the goal shouldn't be a number. It should be like, okay, what's the value you 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 know what's the value of this thing you're doing, and how can you continue doing it? That should be the goal, not just an arbitrary number. You know, numbers they are good to just show you how far you've come and all of that. Um, but I feel like the main goal is just okay. So we get to one million, I just stop. Getting to one million doesn't mean it's going to be easier. Sure. You're still going to keep doing the work. It's still going to be stressful. Like making content is stressful. I'm sure you know. Yeah. <laughs> So, so the goal should be that one million shouldn't be like what drives people or what drives you like okay one million it's a goal it's a good place to set a goal but it should just be more of like okay i just want to keep on making telling consistent stories telling stories that have an impact on people's lives and things that people can learn from and resonate with so that's kind of like my mindset but i agree with you um you know you should need to take time to celebrate because if not I was born out, so you just get tired because it's tired. It's a lot. It, of work. it is. It is a lot of work. Yeah. I totally agree. I think two questions just I like, dropped in my spirit. Okay. I was like, the first yeah. one I'll ask. Tell us, tell us, tell us. Like still on like you know money numbers mm -hmm. and earnings is, are you going to share with us today how much you earn in a month? How much I earn in a month? Yes. 
from so everything what, that you do. So what I earn in a month, it depends. <sighs> Don't give us political Wait, answer. No, it's not Wait, political what? answer. Wait, what? A number? Because <laughs> it depends. So I can give you, so let me give you an idea of, okay, like the last brand deal I did, mm-hmm. and uh, the brand paid me. So the brand paid me like, uh, I think 7,005 for a, for a one minute interrogation in my video. So sometimes it comes. But there are some months I won't make any money. But you also have to realize that I spend a lot of money on my videos. There's a video I made, a travel video, I spent $8,000 on it. Damn. There's a video I also made when I went to, I can't even tell you the video, I went to Morocco. That video I spent almost six grand on it because I had to fly with my, I had to fly with my filmmaker and I had to buy his ticket twice because they didn't allow him to fly because he didn't have a Schengen visa. I was flying Air France via like Air France to Morocco. You need, yeah, so you so need a... I didn't know that I was gonna mm. need. But me, I had the Schengen visa. He didn't have. So me, I just felt like okay, we we'll just be on the same flight. I didn't know. So when we got to the airport, they didn't let me fly. So I had to buy another ticket instantly. And I had to get a one thousand three hundred. So basically, on him alone, we spent two five just on tickets dollars. That's minus my own. My ticket was like one three or something. Mm. So yeah, eventually, that's like four k already. Hotels, food, activities. So it's, a, it's it's kind of like the content you make is like, it's expensive to it's produce. It's very expensive to mm. produce. So if I tell you I made 6K from one band, just know that I also spent like 6K. Mm. Um, but for me, I feel like what I've realized is the more you grow the platform, the more you grow the numbers, the more you grow, how will I explain it now? Like by the time I get to 1 million now, I can charge more for brand deals. So eventually right it will start to cover the costs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As someone who like puts out quality content consistently, do you ever feel? Because I feel that pressure sometimes. Yeah. You know the pressure that oh, Tyler's video should hit at least fifty k in the first two days. Else oh, okay. is, is there something wrong with the video? Or it's not quite good. Do you ever yeah. feel that pressure? Yeah, it's when you post a video, it doesn't do well. But what I've learned sometimes is that it's just to be consistent with making the content. Like if you, you know, you can. You can only control how much work you put in. You can't control true. how people will react to yeah. it. So your yeah. goal to, should be just to focus on putting out, putting out more work. Because if you if you turn your happiness to how people will react to your video, you just decide every time and be depressed. And it's not like I don't feel it. Sometimes you post a video, you spend so much time and effort on it, and the video just bombs, it doesn't do well. And I was like, ah. And for me, sometimes you spend a lot of money. Like imagine spending like 5K, 6K on a video, and the video does not do well. Mm. That money is gone. <laughs> it's, it's like it's that like a, done. but it's it's on the platform. It's on so the platform. So in two years, someone might still discover the video, uh, even yeah. if it does not perform well in the first. Uh, you say in two, two years, <laughs> how will I survive for the next two years? <laughs> if I had five k and I spend the whole five k on the video, will I wait for two years to wait for it? It's, it's a business at the end of the day. But 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 I feel like the point is, and um, the point is, you know, you make some wins, you make some losses, but at the end of the day, everything would still gather up. And I, and there's this thing where it's like. Um, eighty percent of your of your like is it like the benefit or the positivities or the influence or income or whatever will come from twenty percent of your work. Eighty percent of your results will come from twenty percent of your work. Most times, that's what usually happens. So sometimes you can drop four videos, you can drop nine videos, they won't do well. But that last video that does well will cover it's up for the, for the cost of the other for the cost ones. of the other mm. ones. It's just a thing to in business. Mm. So your goal should just be doing putting in as much work as possible. Mm. And also learning as much. You need to keep learning every day. Like every day, like every day that I'm not actively, maybe I'm not shooting on, on the go. I'm watching YouTube videos. I'm watching new podcasts. Oh, what's Mr. Beast saying? Mm. What's this guy saying? Oh, this guy that go to 10 million in mm. like three, four years. How did he do it? Mm. Oh, this other guy. So I watch a lot. So I get a lot of information. Okay, thumbnails. How do I make my thumbnails so they get more clicks? How do I handle retention? What kind of topics do I need to make that will resonate with a lot of people? Um, you know, just different things. How can I make the same content I make, but make it in like a, a different way? So that, because at the end of the day, YouTube, you need to keep evolving as a YouTuber. Mm. If I was doing what I was doing when I started, I wouldn't be where I am now. This so is true. every time yeah. I constantly have to keep coming up with new ideas, new content. Okay, well, this type of video is doing well. Okay, fine. Which other one can I, can I open again? Because every time you create a content that does well, you unlock a new space or a new niche or a new whatever. Like, I did a video with Davido. 24 that hours with. That video was banging. So, that, I've never done something like that on my Literally. channel before. But the idea came and I'm mm. like, okay, let me do this video. Mm. And I did it. And it did well. So, mm. 
that's unlocked something else on my channel. Now I know people want to see that kind of content, so I'll, mm. I'll make more of that. And today or tomorrow, I might come up with a new idea and I might just make that idea. And it's like, oh, it resonates with people. So mm. it's just like music too. You can't just keep singing the same type of song. If, if Bonaboo was only singing one type of song, you'd get tired of it. So yeah. diversity, you have mm. to be diverse as you go. Mm. So. Speaking of diversity, we film the video yeah. on Tyler's channel. Yeah. If, it's, if it's out by now, I'm going to link it below. You guys should check that out. Check it was out. so much fun to create and I stepped out of my comfort zone in that video and I'm glad I did because I revealed some things that I never thought I would reveal in my life yeah, and to go and watch it. it wasn't too bad. It actually was oh, like the whole process was actually quite seamless and um, I don't know, I learned something new about myself as well. Hmm, so thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for revealing yourself. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, my next question is from traveling Africa, from traveling around Africa, around yeah. Europe, coming to the UK, and possibly yeah. you know going to the US. Yeah. Has all of that cost something you need to change? Like your exposure to the world, to different cultures, different people, yeah, has it inspired definitely. like a change in you? And what was it? Is there like one thing you can say, okay, this is what has changed mm. since? I think definitely it has inspired, like traveling opens your mind to like the world and meeting different types of people. It makes you understand the world better. It makes you understand that, you know, like um, you need to be, you need to, it makes you have more empathy. Mm. Because then, you know, you're not just thinking about the world from just your own tiny space and be like, okay, this is what happens in Lagos, this is what we do in Lagos, so it has to be like this everywhere. But when you go to other countries and you see like, okay, oh, they do this here, oh, they do this here, so you're like, okay, the world is just like a, a very big, massive place with different cultures, different traditions, different types of people. So it makes you more, what's the word I would call it? What's the word I would call it? More... What's what they say when it's like you... More open? You more, it makes you more open, but it also makes you more... Another word for empathy. But it makes you more empathetic mm. to like a lot of people mm. and just more accommodating. Mm. Okay, yeah, you're right. That's what I was looking for. It makes you more accommodating when you travel a lot. So you, you begin to understand that, okay, okay, this happens here, this happens here, it's cool. And you learn a lot too. You learn a lot. It opens your mind to ideas. You have a lot of new ideas. So. Without even traveling, I think the internet was has been one of the greatest inventions of man. Because without traveling, even if I travel to all these places, I've already had like an idea of them. But being there and actually interacting with people there and seeing it on ground for the first time, you know, it just gives you like a different mindset. Even cultures, cultures too. Like I went to some place in Nigeria. This is even Nigeria, uh, back here there. Kano states, um, the hyena men. That's I showed a video on the hyena men of Nigeria. These are men who live with hyenas and they have a tradition. Violence. And it was so interesting and like to see that, oh, there's that culture in Nigeria. Nobody ever knew about it. Then when I pushed the video out, we were like, oh, wow, they never knew this existed. Mm. So you learn a lot. It opens your mind to a lot of things and it just makes you a much more rounded human being. True, true. Would, do you have plans to relocate to the UK? No. It's too cost. I don't know what's very strong. I don't have plans to relocate to the UK. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I have plans to do business in the UK and I don't necessarily need to be here to do the business. This is true. Because for me, it's like, I have, a, I have plans to, to travel across the world and, and build businesses across the world, have customers for whatever products I want to create across the world. Because now, you know, there's in, we live in the internet, everything, you can create a business from even Nigeria. And, and you don't even it. need to leave the country. You don't even need to mm. leave the country. You can create a business. You can get a business from everywhere. But in terms of living, like, I don't even think in the, in the eventual future, I don't think um, I'll be the kind of person who would be in a place for a, a very long period of time. You wouldn't want to settle in one place and just be like, okay, for the next three years, I'm going to be in this country. Will you always be the, the guy who travels, explores, and like just... I think I'll always be a nomad. Mm. I don't feel like I would settle. I feel like I would get bored of wherever. I would definitely have a place where it's like, this place is like home, you know, like where like home is, mm. but I think I would just keep exploring and try because the world is a big place. Like it's going to take a long time to complete it. And what else is there in life than to just explore the world? Like wh what more would you do? Do you want to just make money and stay in one place? Mm, not really. I think the more you travel, the more, you know, it's like, it's like different pages in a book. And every time you go to a new place, you just open a new page, you open a new page. I think it's interesting. It is, uh, but yeah. travel can get tiring too sometimes. So there's a, there's the other side to it. 
especially if you're traveling for content. But yeah, I think I, uh, I, I've enjoyed it so far. What would you say to your 15 year old self with the experience that you have right now? 15 year old Tayo, were you, you were still in like secondary school, Abby? Yeah, I think I was. You had already started hustling at this point, but you had no open Mr. Macaroni. Yeah, so. <laughs> what, what would you say to 15 year old Tayo? Um, hmm. I don't really know, because like whatever I would have said to 15 year old Tayo would probably still be what I would say to myself now. I feel like everything that has happened in my life has been leading up to this moment. So I don't really feel like I regret anything. Like I'm so happy I did those things that I've done so far and I'm so happy I failed at them because I failed very early. Mm. And when you fail early, it's like, you know, you've, you've done it, you fail. So it makes you fearless in pursuing other things. It's like, I failed already. So what else? I failed, I've lost all my money. I was even owing people. I've been in debt. So what else does life like want to trap me? So I think, I think what I'll just say is just uh, you know like all the dots will connect in the future. So don't 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 worry too much. Don't overthink because I have a problem with overthinking and worrying. I worry a lot about like oh like oh like what, like figuring stuff out. Like okay, I don't have it figured out yet, and I just worry like okay, how do I figure this out? But I feel like the dots will connect in the future. Like. The dots will connect uh, in the future eventually. Like things will basically make it makes sense. sense Usha, yeah. Usha, the puzzle will share join itself. You need to put that on the t-shirt. All the dots will connect in the future. That is such a cool line. Uh, Tire 2023. Okay, I, I, probably, I probably stole that from <laughs> Steve Jobs though. Oh, did you? Yeah, because he said something it about it. It sounded so original. I was just like, wait, uh, what? But that's not that's not what he said. I think he said that the dots eventually connect looking backwards like the dots ah, like hindsight is 2020 mm, mm. you won't know like if you look at your life now as you are now you can't really say what's going to happen one year two years from now you have plans yeah, and dreams but when you look at your life in hindsight you can look at everything all the decisions you made all the people you met you can look at how everything made you led up to where you are now so it's like when you look back into your life, it's like you're watching a movie, mm. but you don't really know what's going to happen in the mm. future. So that's the mm. dots connecting backward. Mm. But I think that dots can also connect forward too. But we can't predict the future. But we can't though. predict So it. what, do we now make decisions hoping that certain dots will connect? Exactly. And you shouldn't worry about it because at the end of the day, if you make mistakes, you learn from them. As long as you don't make a mistake, that will kill you, sure. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want that. <laughs> there are probably content creators from Africa, US, you know, all around the world watching this video and they are still aspiring, trying to figure out the industry, navigate YouTube. I'm aspiring too. I beg you, aspiring, care. <laughs> you that you're already up there who are trying to like reach that level. <laughs> what uh, three skills or three tips would you give to an aspiring content creator to, you know, help them figure out the space a lot hmm. better. I think the first one I would say is like just fall in love with making videos. Like that's the I think that's the one the most if I say anything, if you take anything from this whole video as a creator, just take that. Fall in love with making content. When you fall in love with making content, every other thing becomes easy. Hmm. You know, because when you really love something, like you, nobody needs to push you to do it. Even when it gets hard, even when you fail, you still keep going back to doing it. It's just like look at people like Michael Jordan. Those people, like, playing basketball is not easy, but I'm sure they fell in love with training, practicing. They fell in love with playing basketball. So when they train, when they have to train and and throw 1,000 hoops or throw 1,000 shots or whatever, or someone like Messi. Messi loves football or Ronaldo. They all love football. That's why, like, they love it. So they are constantly there on the pitch at night, in the morning, day. So they work hard at it. It just comes naturally to them. Mm. And, and I feel like every content creator should just fall in love with making videos. Don't think about the money at the beginning. I didn't even think I was going to make I didn't know I was going to make money. I didn't know that I was going to be traveling. I never imagined traveling. I just wanted to finish school and do business. And maybe find something that I was selling. <laughs> I actually read estate management. So my idea was that I'll finish school and I'll start selling houses. But yeah, um, so that's one. I think another one too is uh, is never be afraid of like failure or be afraid of what people would think about you as regards like, oh, you know, some people wanted to do video and they're like, oh, what do my friends say? Oh, they will, you know, putting, I'm putting myself out on the internet. Oh, wait, are, are you talking about me, Tyre? What, 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 what is this? I don't know if you what, what, you, what, 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 yeah, I'm what? talking to you. I'm talking about people because I also felt that, you know, I also felt that too. Mm. But the thing is that my love, 
for what I was doing did not make me really think too much about because I'm sure when I started some people were like what's this guy doing because I was making some videos that were looking very crappy and all my videos were good and so don't think too much about what other people would think don't think too much about what other people would say or whether they like your videos or not and the funny thing is your friends and family might not support you they won't even be the ones yeah. to support you these strangers from outside that would start liking your videos so don't get upset if they don't support you they will understand eventually so they don't need to understand the beginning and i think lastly also don't be you know don't your first videos don't have to be perfect because mm. you have to learn like your first videos your first 100 videos will be crappy or maybe your first 200 self. But just keep making those videos. The more you make, the better you get. Like even up to now, I still want to upgrade the quality of my videos. To where? Uh, to I was, I was start shooting with Ari Alexa and all those film what? cameras. So, but you won't start like I didn't start. I started filming on my phone, so my videos were very crappy at the beginning. They were not even looking nice. I filmed on my phone. Got even nowadays you can even get a lot of nice quality shots on your phone. If you yeah, use an iPhone or a Samsung or something. True. So don't think that your first videos are going to be perfect. Just make, make make more keep pushing out there and if you don't get views it still doesn't matter just keep making those videos one day one day one of those videos will pop off and you'll be good so yeah and also just start just start and on that note i think it's a good place to end the video yeah. like you've answered all these questions even so, it out, man. yes now to look <laughs> pro <laughs> <laughs> to look professional and ready um yeah. thank you for coming thank you for, for for being present on the channel sharing your wisdom and being so like genuine in your answers i, I really oh. do appreciate that i hope you guys enjoyed watching this video it has been mr tyler here if I'm going to leave his link, links to his YouTube and Thanks, Instagram subscribe. down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to his channel. Subscribe to Kim Dave as well. Where subscribe to Kim Dave. Kim Dave. Shop, shop. Subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. I, I did not pay him to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time, have a good morning, afternoon, and evening, wherever you are. Bye. Bye. You don't know your intro yet. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> excuse, excuse me, sir. We've not done the intro. <laughs> How much about treat you? Fifty percent. <laughs> like twenty minutes, twenty-five minutes. Okay. Okay. So I'm off yet. <laughs> <laughs> He's not off yet. I'm still weak. <laughs>